What's going on guys? I am Watch Share Go and today we're here with my 1997 Lincoln Town Car to show you everything that's broken on it. And uh, there's a pretty big list of broken things. I'm gonna show you the coolest broken thing first. Come back here, check this out. This bad boy is laid out. There's the top of the tire. My fingers are just touching it. The tires are tucked and it's absolutely beautiful. I love this look. If anyone knows how to control the air suspension so it can just, so you can lay it out whenever you want without, you know, putting AccuAir on the car, tell me how. I mean, I know we could just disconnect the lines, but I love how low it is. Also, the uh, driver's side leaks down and the passenger side front does not leak down. It stays at full height over here, which I think is pretty funny. And the passenger rear does lay out as well. It's buried pretty far in there. Not as far down as the uh, driver's side for sure, but it's pretty far. <laughs> look, look at the back of this thing. It's such a good look. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. It looks like I did it on purpose, but as soon as I start it up, the air suspension does work and it'll put it back in the air where it belongs. And since it's pouring rain outside and I wanna show you uh, a lot more broken things on the car, let's warp to somewhere dry. And we're inside. And before I shut the car off, I gotta show you guys some of the lights on the dash because they're all on. So we have the ABS light. Of course, the ABS does not work. You've seen us slide the whole car sideways down the road, which is pretty fun. You get going 40, 50 mile an hour, stab the brakes really hard, it locks up all four, you can just slide it. Super fun to do. Uh, the tires are probably not gonna last very long. The check engine, the emergency check engine light's on, of course. Not just the steady on check engine light, the flashing one, which is like, the engine's broken. And of course that comes on when it starts running down four cylinders, it pops right up. Here we have the overdrive off light, and uh, here's the overdrive on and off switch. You can see me pushing it. Nothing happens. I don't know what's up with that switch, but half the time I start the car, overdrive works perfectly. The other half, you have no overdrive and the light's on. So uh, I just kind of dealt with that because it's probably a nightmare to fix those two little wires that run up the shift column. And the rest of the time, we have the check air suspension light, uh, but the air suspension works fine. So I'm not sure what the light's on for, other than maybe it can measure that the bags leak down. I, I doubt that. That would be some modern technology. That's some AccuAir E-Level stuff right there, not uh, 1997 Lincoln Town Car. Now let's get outside. Before you go up, let me check the fuel lines. Thank you. Well, we've never had this car on a lift and we don't exactly have a lift for it. So this forklift should do. Let's look and see where his forks ended up. You got an inch. Right there. That's gotta be it. Because it barely touches the other rail. All right, do it. I sure hope this doesn't fail. <laughs> What a bouncy, th look at this. All right, it's good. All right, stop. So what we don't know is if the O2 sensors were put back into the uh, stacks, uh, I wanted to check. So this is what our lift's here for. Oh, look at all the antifreeze that's pouring out. That's a lot of antifreeze. Never noticed that before. It's kind of weird because the heat works just fine. All right, this is dangerous. Don't try it at home, please, anybody. I'm gonna hop under here real quick. Guys, if the car starts falling, lift it up for me. Just catch it, no big deal. All right, so underneath we've got, there's a rear O2. It looks like a brand new starter, wow. Uh, there's a front O2 pre-cat right up there. Uh, of course, we've got a pre-cat and a rear cat on here too. So all the O2s are still intact. I'm kind of surprised. He actually cut the exhaust right at the O2s and just popped the stacks on. A bit of rust in the oil pan, a little bit of rust on everything. That's kind of uh, par for the course on this car. So the frame extension is unbelievably well done. Look at this, it's painted steel, beautifully done. I uh, figured the frame would sag, but I don't think this thing's ever going to sag. Looks good, right? Where you, what's your take? Decent. Decent. <laughs> it is, it's basically decent. Uh, it looks like the U-joint has probably failed right here. We've got uh, grease everywhere, and that's a nice rusted out old U-joint. So I'd say that's probably dying. It's got a two-piece drive shaft that they definitely hacked on this bad boy. Let's see who did the drive shaft. Driveline repair. 
in Olathe, Kansas. Well, oh, I bet I bet they uh, replaced the drive shaft for the pastor that owned it. The air suspension looks great. All right, while it's in the air, let's point out the rust. We've got uh, front fender rust right there. That rust is deep and nasty. I, I think that fender is probably gonna fall off. Uh, we've got a lot of rust right here. We've got uh, the paint coming off here, paint coming off here. It looks like Bondo, really thick Bondo, failing. Wheel well is rusting out. Uh, probably everywhere if I had to guess, but this bumper's plastic, it's not gonna rust. Congrats Ford, you did something right. Uh, there's a lot of failure here. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. It's not rust, it's just been beat. Driver rear, we've got tons of rust. It's got a new fuel filter right there. Somebody's definitely tried to do all the maintenance on this car, but I don't think you could ever do all the maintenance on this car. This side actually looks pretty straight. I've never noticed this car dripping a drop of antifreeze, and it typically doesn't smell like antifreeze either, but there is a ton of it under this car. Maybe it was here before me, I don't know, but like, that's a big puddle right there. That's a, I mean, there's my hand, it's, it's a foot long. Subway, trademark. Time to let this thing down. Don't drop my limo, dude. I'll try not. Don't, don't do it. I didn't time that or anything, but I think it took two to three minutes just to air the rear end up. It's kind of a long process. If you know a way to manually control the ride height of the 97 Lincoln Town Car, please let me know because I will totally dump the bags and drive it around. It would look amazing laid out. Uh, oh, it's so good. Okay, on the exterior, we've got the, uh, the top is basically a big slice of butter. It's, it's pretty much all trash. There's rust and sealant all along here. You can see, uh, yeah, it's real nice. They did a great job building this. It's the vinyl top, of course. I mean, I don't blame them. Vinyl tops are terrible. Uh, we've got rust right here. None of this really seals, so you get a lot of water in this seat. This seal here is pretty much just trash. It's double sealed and it still leaks like none other. Uh, you can see rust coming inside the door from all that water that leaks through that top seal. These things don't work on any of the doors really. They either flop or they're stuck shut. The uh, door handle covers are gone. The top's coming up right here. You can see that's all. Here in the back, we've got this rear uh, HVAC unit. Maybe it's got electric air and heat somehow in that little module. Uh, it's a little square box in the trunk. It doesn't work. The doors have to be absolutely slammed, typically as hard as you can, or they don't seal at all. They don't, they just don't shut. The fuel door has to be pried open with a screwdriver because uh, the switch has definitely gone. The trunk one works though. Oddly, the uh, adjustable power steering works just fine. It actually does adjust. All right, let's hop under the hood. Come around here. Hood supports work great. That's a bonus. So the driver's side bank of cylinders shuts off all together while you're driving. And I'm not quite sure what that is, each coil pack runs different sides of the engine, like they kind of alternate. So I'll try to reseat them real quick, see if it runs any better when I'm done here. Reseat the actual coil connector and everything. Of course it has the brand new coolant sensor that I just did. And uh, I don't know where that leak's coming from. Ah, the relay for the headlight flashers, I think. It's kind of a cool setup right there. They did a nice job building that box. I think that is everything that's wrong with my 1997 Lincoln Town Car. Let's Let's get out of here. The most technological feature of the car and uh, one of my favorites does work. The backlight comes on, I just don't know what the code is and I don't wanna go through the reset procedure either. You, on the trucks, you have to pull off the passenger trim and look up the old code and type that in and reset it. Forget it, I don't need to know the code. I'm just glad we had some handy dandy forklifts. And that is it for today, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do and I will talk to you next time. Okay, you guys want a forklift tour since I'm here? Here's a very large Clark forklift. I mean, like this is me and it's on the ground and this is the top of the actual forklift lifting section here. It'll lift 45,000 pounds, four foot out from the floor. <laughs> 45,000 pounds out here. Out here, that's crazy. We could pick up a small ship. It's got a big uh, V8 Cummins diesel, a brand new paint job. They're finishing up a few things on that. Let's hop on here. Oh, model number, four Y450D, or C500-450D. All right, coming on in here. This is gigantic, and look at the uh, hydraulic controls. They're, they're so ridiculous. 
And the craziest thing is the hydraulic controls are like local to the lift section. It's got a, one very large roof here. Cabin heat. Hard to beat cabin heat. Cool, cool. Here's the controls. We've got all of our engine stats right there. Air pressure. There's the heat control. Lights. Oh, look at that. Lights fire right up, even no key in it. Has some turn signals. Doesn't look like those are working right now. Gear selector one through three, forward and reverse. This is definitely a big forklift. Check this out. This is a future video on the channel. You've never seen it before. This is a 1974 Suzuki RE5 rotary engine powered motorcycle. This is a Wankel hiding right in there. It's full of good times, high RPMs, super smooth highway cruising, and failing apex seals. What could be better than that? I doubt anybody has seen one of these on the street in ages, honestly. Look at these electric fans. So cool. Oh look, the battery's good too. It was running recently. It literally breathes fire out of the exhaust. Best thing ever.